You know, sometimes the Lord wants to work with us, but we are not really listening or we're not paying attention or or we're not uh, willing to do what he's telling us to do. I know that probably doesn't describe you, but sometimes that happens to me. You get used to doing a certain thing. You get used to your routine. And when the Lord speaks to you to do something else, sometimes it can be challenging. I remember I was at a uh, conference and I was sitting in the front row during worship. I had my notes with me. And the Lord told me, leave your notes here when you go up. And I said, but Lord, I like my notes. And the Lord said, no, leave your notes at your seat and just go up. And again, I, I just sat there in the front row. I had my notes in my hand. They were still in my hand. The Lord spoke to me again and said, leave your notes here. And I still had not put them down. <laughs> and all of a sudden, the woman behind me, she taps me on the shoulder and she says, the Lord is telling you that you're supposed to do what he tells you to do. And <laughs> so I started laughing and I just said, okay, okay, Lord, that I'll do exactly what you tell me. So I went up to minister and I left my notes at my chair. And uh, it turns out the Lord had something completely different in mind. Once I, I didn't know what it was. You know, sometimes he gives us the next step, but he doesn't give us the whole picture sometimes. And so as I stood there in the pulpit wondering what comes next, the Lord tells me that he wants to give everyone attending a sword. He wants to give people a sword with which to do battle. And uh, so I just explain this to people. And uh, I ask them to line up. Now, I didn't know what this was going to look like. I'm just listening to, to, to what he's telling me and then stepping forward. I didn't see the angel with the swords until I had everyone lined up and, I, and it was time to pass them out. So then I turned and I looked to my left and there was an angel standing there and he had a sword and he handed it to me. And so I, I handed it to the first person. And I just explained, just accept this by faith, because most of them could not see what I was seeing, but I told them to accept it by faith. And as we moved down the line, the angel would hand me a sword, I would hand it to the person. The angel would hand me another sword, I would hand it to the next person, and we went down the line. There was probably maybe 200 people in the line. And so um, I felt really good about following the Lord's instruction. This was, it was powerful. People were visibly affected because uh, many times people have needs and they need to know that God is hearing their cries and that God is equipping them for what he wants to do and for uh, the needs that they have, that God is concerned. They need to know it in a real way. And this did that. So I was very happy that I finally obeyed God's voice. But when I went to back to go sit down, uh, the woman behind me again, she said, you're not going to believe this. I want to show you what I wrote in my journal this morning. Uh, we came early to pray over the place and I want to read what I saw. She said, when we first came here, and this is what she had written, I saw the Lord Jesus uh, laying in a line sword after sword after sword, all the way across the front of the church. And that's what she had written. So the Lord was planning to do something. And when he plans to do something, we need to be obedient to that voice. Now, had I not been obedient, had I just taken my notes up and, and spoken from my notes and shared something that uh, I wanted to share, I don't believe heaven would have opened like that. I don't believe that, uh, that I would have seen what was going on in the Spirit, that I would have interacted with the angel. In this case, working with the angel that was helping pass out the swords was me being obedient to the voice of God. And then heaven opened because of my obedience. Now, it wasn't radical obedience because the Lord had to like push me 
several times and then give me a confirmation and then have someone tell me, come on, listen to what the Lord's telling you and do it. So, which is, to me, that's very hopeful because even when we're not quite getting it, the Lord will give us opportunity after opportunity to obey His voice. He's a good God. So I would just want to encourage you in working with angels. One of the things that we need to know is to listen for God's voice and to obey it. Now, I've since come to obey the Lord's voice more immediately. He doesn't have to tell me three times to leave my notes at the chair. Uh, now, it won't, if he just tells me to do it, then I will do it. But uh, he's a good God. He wants us to obey his voice so that the things of heaven are manifest in us and through us as we go, as we minister, as we do the work of the gospel and the kingdom. So that's what working with angels looked like in this particular case. Obedience is better than sacrifice. God bless you, and I hope this uh, little testimony blesses you.